All right, we're going to talk about what a discriminant is of a quadratic function. So I, my learning targets are I will use a discriminant to determine the nature of solutions of a quadratic equation. So let's start with some definitions. The first definition is rational. So it's a word you've probably heard of before, but we're not 100% sure what it means. Rational is any number that can be expressed as a fraction, A over B, of two integers where B is not allowed to be zero. So any fraction, so 3 over 7, 9 over 15, um, 2 over 1, because even right here, whole numbers are also considered rational, right? Because 2 over 1 is just 2, but it can be expressed as a fraction of some sort. So anything that can be expressed as a fraction is a rational number. Irrational numbers are numbers unable to be written as A over B and is not an imaginary number. So if you have 2i, 2i is an imaginary number. It is considered not, uh, it's considered irrational, okay? Um, pi and the square root of any number are irrational numbers. So, and the reason why they're irrational is because if you went on a calculator and you click enter, it would give you a decimal that never, ever ends. Um, rational numbers, some people argue, well, 0.3 keeps repeating forever. Yes, but it repeats with a pattern. If it repeats with a pattern, it's considered rational. If it, com if it keeps going without a pattern, it is irrational. All right, the discriminant. The discriminant is an expression of b squared minus 4ac. So if you remember the quadratic equation, so let me write that out for you just in case. So the quadratic formula is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So it's talking about this piece right here, just the guy inside the square root. So the discriminant is that guy right here. All right, so rules of discriminant. So I'm kind of just going to go step by step. It is a little bit, but it's a nice table for you to have. So if you have your discriminant and it's greater than zero and it's considered a perfect square, then you have two real rational solutions. So you take this guy, we simplify him down. If he is greater than zero and it's a number that if we took the square root, it would not give me a decimal, then it is a real number that has rational solutions. And there's two of them. If it is the same thing, if it's still greater than zero, but if I take the square root of it and it gives me a decimal, then I still have two real answers, but they're considered irrational because it would be left as a square root. If it equals zero, so say we've got b squared minus 4ac, and when we simplify it, it gives me zero, then I have one real rational solution. It is considered a double root. Now remember the word root can be exchanged for zero, solution, um, x-intercept. So it's pretty much just telling me that your solution will end up happening twice, but it'll only show up once. And then lastly, b squared minus 4ac is less than zero is two complex conjugate solutions. And we are going to show one of each one of these so that you understand what that means. All right, so we are going to find the discriminant of the following types. So I do have four because each one of them is one of the different types on the table. So this one, we've got 4x squared plus 5x minus 6. I'm going to use the quadratic formula. Actually, I guess I'll just show you the whole thing. We're going to use the quadratic formula. So a, b, and c are now 4, 5, and negative 6. And I'm going to plug it into just the discriminant piece, the b squared minus 4ac. I don't care about any other part right now. So b is 5, a is 4, and c is negative 6. So I plug all those in. You can use your calculator. Like literally type it in just as you see it. There's no need to get all fancy about it. So negative or 5 squared minus 4 times 4 times negative six. Just as we see it, we click enter and you get 121. Perfect. So then the question is, is my discriminant greater than zero or is it less than zero? Well, 121 is greater than zero. So that means that it's either one of the first two situations. So I'm gonna flip back here. So since it's greater than zero, it's either gonna be two real rational solutions or two real irrational solutions. 
So let's keep going to see what goes next. Okay, then the next question, is it a perfect square? So in other words, if I take the square root of 121, do I get a whole answer? So I'm going to put in the square root of 121. I click enter. It gives me a whole answer, so it is considered a perfect square. So again, going back to my little chart down here, it's greater than zero and it's a perfect square. That means that it has two real rational solutions. All right, the second one. So we've got four x squared minus five x minus two. So we are going to plug it into the discriminant. So a is four, b is negative five this time, and c is negative two. So b is gonna be negative five, a is going to be 4, C is going to be negative 2. Again, we're going to type it straight into our calculator, and we get 57. So is 57 bigger than 0 or smaller than 0? 57 is obviously bigger than 0, so again, it's going to be the one of the first two. We're going to have two real solutions. It's just is it rational or irrational? We don't know. The second question is, is it a perfect square? So we take our calculator, square root of 57. We click Enter. It gives me a decimal. That means it is irrational. That is not what I want. So since it's irrational or irrational or I don't know, I might say it funny. But since it's irrational, it is not a perfect square. So two real numbers gives me two real irrational solutions. All right, next one, same thing, 4, 4, and 1. We're going to put it into my discriminant. So 4 goes in for B, 4 goes in for A, and 1 goes in for C because they're all positive. So when you type that in the calculator, it gives you zero. So the question is, is it bigger than zero or smaller than zero? Well, technically it's neither. It's equal to zero, which means that I can skip everything else because it's either bigger, smaller, or it's equal to. If it's equal to, I'm done. It's one real rational solution. I don't have to do anything else. One real rational solution, all done. All right, this one right here, again, 4, 4, and positive 5. We're going to plug him in. And when I plug him in this time, I'm going to get 4 squared minus 4 times 4 times 5. When I type that into my calculator, it gives me negative 64. So is that guy greater than 0, or is he smaller than 0? Negative 64 is definitely smaller than 0. Well, going back to here, there is only one guy that's allowed to be smaller than zero, so my answers are going to end up being two complex conjugate solutions, which looks like that. All right, that's all I have for you. If you got any questions on discriminant, please feel free to come see me in tutoring.